National Lifeboat Institution was founded by Sir William Hillary in 1824. Not only was he the founder, but three times he won the gold medal for gallantry for saving life at sea. The history of our lifeboat service is rich in stories of dangerous and gallant rescues by the fine brave men who, through the years, have maintained the great tradition of the service. Many are the decorations that have been awarded to these intrepid seamen. And so high is the standard by which their gallant deeds are judged that the coveted gold medal for conspicuous gallantry has been awarded only 127 times since the foundation of the institution, an average of just once a year. There are lifeboats all around our coasts at 154 different stations. As soon as the maroon sounds, each member of the crew, and they are all volunteers, leaves his normal employment immediately. At any time, day or night, the call may come. And when it does, it's all hands to the lifeboat house to get the boat away. The lifeboat plunges into the sea with a great splash. Her bows go right under, but soon she rides clear as the water rushes away through the scuppers. This is one of our most modern lifeboats. It has twin screw diesel engines, a receiving and transmitting radio, a line throwing pistol and a loud hailer with a range of 500 yards. In the early days, they were very different. The first lifeboat, the original, an open rowing boat, was given its special buoyancy by cork floats. The early lifeboats, of course, had neither engines nor sails. They depended on the strength of the men at the oars. Boats would put out in the teeth of any gale, tossed like corks by stormy seas, as the courage and endurance of the oarsmen urged her towards the ship she had gone to rescue. This is the very last of the old pulling lifeboats still in service. And soon the sight of a lifeboat being rowed back in the calm water of a harbour, with the rhythm of a boat race crew, will be only a gallant memory. About the middle of last century, sails were added to assist the men at the oars. But they could only be used if the weather was favourable, and the sails were always furled on approaching a ship in danger. It was still the oars which brought the lifeboat alongside. Nearly 50 years ago, the first motor lifeboats were built, and sails were still kept as auxiliary parts. In the old days, the lifeboat was often hauled by hand through the narrow streets to the sea. Sometimes half the population turned out to help the launch. And today... Our fine modern lifeboats, with their powerful engines and all the equipment that science has given them, are an outstanding example of skill and craftsmanship, and they can't sink. But, like everything else, they cost three times as much as they did in 1939. So, please give generously on Lifeboat Day to save life at sea.